I'm joined now by the former Syrian diplomat Bassam Barabandi. He worked for the Syrian government for 14 years, but then he left his post at the Washington Embassy in 2013 and founded People Demand Change. Also, we have the Syrian journalist and human rights activist Assad Hanna in Gaziantep in southern Turkey. And from London, we're joined by George Galloway, a former British Member of Parliament for the Labour Party and the Respect Party. Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for your time. Bassam Barabandi, back in 2011, when Bashar al-Assad's forces, yes, security services, arrested those young people for writing anti-government graffiti on a school wall, and then those same forces violently cracked down on demonstrators. Was Bashar al-Assad reacting in the only way he knows how? Is he just a product of his father's 30-year leadership of Syria? Uh, thank you for having me. When the revolution started in Syria, it started very peaceful. The people were asking just to get their norms, normal things that the people all the world are asking for, dignity, human rights, stop the corruption, release the detainees, uh, abandon the martial laws. They didn't ask for quite good time, the change of the regime. They, they were really peacefully. They, it was very civilian demonstrators. Uh, they didn't have any weapons. They didn't have any sectarian slogans. And uh, Assad and his regime, they are like any dictatorship in the world. They are very rigid. Even if they thought for a while to have some reforms, they know for sure that they will lose. They will collapse, at least that their feelings. All the initiatives that came to Assad to tell him make some reforms, the international initiative from the international community, his friends and his enemies as well, like United States, at that time, they were telling him, make a reforms and we will support that reforms and we support you. Make free elections, I you will run you. and you may win. Most probably you will win. So uh, he, they cannot, the, the system is very much rigid and the be easiest way for them is to go for fire on the people. I, I believe, till today, I believe that this scenario could be avoided easily. But they didn't have the courage or the wisdom to do so. George Galloway, it could be argued... paying the price. Uh, excuse me, Bassam, for interrupting you. But the point is, is it not, George Galloway, no that uh, Bashar al-Assad created this civil war? That is one very strong argument. No, you won't be surprised that I disagree with uh, most of that, and I'm sure, though I haven't heard him yet, your other guest. Uh, that's not how I see things. I think that Syria has been invaded by former powers, former colonial powers, who have sent their armies and their money and material and mercenaries to destroy uh, Syrian civil society, none of which means uh, that I have any affection for the system of government in Syria. Though you know very well, you know as well as anybody in the world, that when people rise up to overthrow the state, as happened in Turkey uh, comparatively recently, uh, the inevitable response is, uh, is not going to be pleasant. And the uh, legitimate demands of the Syrian people for more freedom, more democracy, more freedom of speech, and so on. These are entirely legitimate demands. I support them in every country in the world, every country in the Arab world, including those countries that are fueling the war in Syria. Uh, but the, don't uh, tell me that uh, by creating a sectarian uh, desert, uh, an alphabet soup of Islamist extremism, that you're bringing freedom to Syria, because Frankly, there are not many people <coughs> left in the world believing that. Assad Hanna, in fact, it's a misnomer. I misspoke. It used to be a civil war. It's now an international conflict. You could almost call it a world war. There are so many countries involved in a conflict, but a world war geographically constrained to one particular area, and that's Syria. You were there at the very start of the demonstrations when they were not specifically a call for Bashar al-Assad to step down. Is it possible to pinpoint a moment when the demands of demonstrations and opposition forces changed to uh, fight for and call for the end of Bashar al-Assad? Yeah, <clears throat> sorry, yeah, uh, we can say it's kind of true, but, but 
it, it was not a war, it was a revolution, as my friend mentioned. It was a revolution started by the civilians, by the people who asked for the freedom. Uh, that's what we did in the in the protest in the uh, first of the raise, uh, ra when it raised up in the 2011. So it, it was a revolution. The people went to the, to the streets to ask for freedom, to ask for the justice, to ask for the democratic civil Syria. That's what they asked for. But you say, you say it's civil war, right? No. Bashar al-Assad who turned it to civil war. It's it's a war right. Uh, it's a war right now. Between, between many uh, countries in, fighting in Syria. Before that, it was a war between the Syrian army and the Syrian civilians in, in the streets. Early in the, uh, after the people started to ask to, to, to move out Bashar al-Assad because he made, he committed a lot of crimes in Syria, so he started to shoot on the people. He started to, to use the panzer, the tanks, the missiles, the artillery, every kind of weapons. Early in 2013, he used the chemical weapons to attack the civilians. He killed in one moment more than 1,500 1, civilians in Eastern Ghouta. Right now, all the countries are focusing on Syria, and maybe they have friends on the ground fighting in, uh, uh, instead of them. So now it's, it's so complicated. But all of what's happening right now, it, that doesn't mean the revolution uh, has ended. That means the revolution will continue, because everyone was believing in this revolution. He, he, he still believes in this revolution. Maybe many of them went out of Syria now as refugees or displaced people. The, the statics say it's about 10 millions or uh, 8 millions, I think, the, the official number. Uh, uh, right now, they are refugees. 8 million, so we are talking about half of the Syrian uh, people. Half of the Syrian went out of Syria or displaced it. So uh, those people who displaced it from their homes because of this region, they cannot accept this region again. So those people, they will keep asking for the justice. They will keep asking for the independence in Syria from all of those uh, international aliens who are fighting in Syria. Uh, Bassam, seven years on, how many people in Syria yeah. still care about those social and political aims of what was a people's revolution, or is it just now become a zero-sum game whereby one side must win and therefore the other side must lose? Uh, I will start by answering Mr. Galloway. He, he knows the area very well, much better than me. His, his, deep, his deep knowledge about he has deep knowledge about it. Uh, Farouk Shara, the vice president of Syria, in his media uh, interview with Al Akbar, which is Ro Hezbollah uh, uh, news outlet. He said, for six months, we were looking for any person have a weapons with the demonstrators, and we didn't fight. And he lost his job because of that statement. As I agree with you, again, that all the imperialism, what you call them imperialism powers, they won't share in Syria a long time ago. And this well-known fact. But it was a sad mistake. Instead of improving the situation of the Syrian, we, it, we, instead of protecting the Syrian society, Syria's sovereignty, he, he, he chose the opposite. He chose to open Syria for all the interference of the world. And now everybody paying the price. So today, back to your questions, we don't have Syria anymore. The Syria that we know, we lost it. The, the mosaic of Syria that we know, we lost it. People, they reject the Islamists, mainly the Islamists. Nobody likes, I mean, when the people went to the street, they were talking about not secular Syria rather than more civilian Syria, that, that people are equal by the laws. There's no corruption, political corruption or moral corruptions. I think this value is still in everybody, all Syrian. Now, unfortunately, the, the revolution was hijacked by Islamists, by, then by extremist Islamists, and again, we, everybody paid the price because of that. The, the moderate people were, were, were stolen their voices. They were silent by outside forces and by the money that injected inside Syria. But we cannot blame the people today. We cannot blame the people on 2011. We blame the regime itself because of rigidity, short sight. We blame the, the friends of Syria who didn't understand Syria well. And instead of helping the Syrian people, they start to use Syria for place for them to achieve their own interests. And that makes things, as my friend Assad say, it's much more complicated today. But if you ask any Syrian in Europe, in Turkey, anywhere, 
you believe that democracy is good or human rights is good or fighting corruption is good or having freedom of speech is good, I don't think anybody will say no, it's a bad idea. So the, the norms, the, the basic of the revolution is stay in the, the soul of the people. Uh, uh, George Galloway, how much do you think that uh, Bashar al-Assad's violent reaction at the start of uh, I'm sorry, I'm the people's you. movement may have been conditioned by what was happening in the Arab Spring uh, in Egypt, in Tunisia, and uh, also eventually it was starting at that moment in March 2011 in Libya as well? Well, I'm sure that any regime, any system uh, which is existentially challenged will use whatever power uh, that it has at its disposal to uh, to quash the threat to itself. That not necessarily true, any frankly, regime. You might not, not necessarily. It. Surely not well, necessarily any regime. Well, a particular type of regime. Well, uh, well no. Uh, frankly, though you might find it difficult to believe, uh, that would happen here in Britain. If, if the threat to the state, its system, the monarchy, the uh, parliament and so on was severe enough, that would happen here. So yes, I do mean any state. I know of no state in history that has uh, willingly uh, and compliantly gone out of business. So I, I, I equally have no doubt that the Syrian regime made many mistakes in those first days first weeks even, uh, of the uh, uprising of people for legitimate demands. I've no doubt. I think they've even conceded that themselves. As to whether this is Bashar al-Assad's responsibility or the regime itself, I used to say to British ministers, you're actually intent on getting rid of Bashar and keeping the regime, but the regime is worse than Bashar. That's my honest point of view, based on uh, just a couple of meetings with him, but I, I think the uh, secret state, the deep state in Syria is much worse than the uh, President Bashar al-Assad, who I think has actually shown quite a bit of wisdom, uh, unexpectedly in my, uh, my interpretation, in how he's uh, handled these last the very, very difficult years. Yeah, but, uh, OK, uh, George, Bassam wants some examples, but I have heard that analysis before, sure. that actually Bashar al-Assad isn't well, totally you, in control I'll, I'll, of Syria, that well, it's actually the regime itself. Well, uh, 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 let me give you an example that involves myself. Uh, I negotiated the release of a British surgeon uh, from prison in Syria, a Dr. Khan, uh, was acting for uh, his local mosque, which was next door to my house. And I secured the agreement of uh, President uh, Bashar uh, that I should come to Damascus to pick him up. And two days, two days before I was to get on the plane to come and pick him up and bring him back to his children, uh, the man, uh, quote unquote, hanged himself uh, in his prison cell in Damascus, even though he knew I was uh, literally on my way to pick him up. Now, I have no doubt, I said so at the time, and at his inquest, that he did not hang himself. He was murdered. But I don't believe for one minute that Bashar al-Assad murdered him or called for him mm -hmm. to be murdered. Okay. That's absurd. OK. George Galloway, Bassam Barabandi, both of you, thank you very much for joining us on the Newsmakers. Assad Hanna, please stay with thank us. Thank you.